All right, welcome everyone to the Burlington Police Department, friends and families, and, and of course our um, amazing employees who are joining our community here at the Burlington Police Department. My name is Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanek. I'm the new mayor of Burlington, and I'm really excited to be here today in particular. This is my first opportunity to be um, in, uh, in this kind of setting, this ceremony, this opportunity to really welcome warmly uh, the new employees and to also honor what is about to happen to promote people and to really honor the really strong work that's been, um, been in place already at the police department. I got to meet many of the, the new recruits uh, just a few minutes ago, and these folks are, have purposely picked Burlington, which is such a wonderful thing to see. So I am, now to my official comments, um, I am pleased to join you all here today uh, to recognize the hard work of the Burlington Police Department's professional staff and sworn officers, and to formally welcome those who have been joining the department in recent months. I wanna start with gratitude for all of the staff at, here at the Burlington Police Department for your hard work and long hours in service to our community. I know that this work can often mean significant sacrifice to you and for your families, and on behalf of the entire city of Burlington, I really truly thank you. As mayor, I'm committed to creating a well-resourced, well-trained, and responsive community safety system. This includes rebuilding our police department and investing in new innovative programs like BTV Cares. This afternoon, we acknowledge and celebrate progress in the ongoing effort to rebuild our sworn officer ranks with the addition of two new police officers and four probationary police officers. I was recently told that five of the six officers being sworn in today have chosen to move to Burlington from out of state, and I figured out where they were all from originally here, um, from cornfields and big cities and, other, and elsewhere. But I really, truly uh, thank you for choosing Burlington. This is an incredible community you are joining. It is an important step forward uh, toward deploying the new, in an important step forward in deploying the new Burlington CARES team, we also welcome Janelle Dumas to, as the first BTV CARES supervisor. And this is a particularly uh, big deal for Burlington as we grapple, like most of the state and country, with increased mental health care needs that are unmet in our community. This is an incredible piece of the puzzle as we come up with a more effective and strategic community safety system. And following the promotion of Lacey Smith to the position of Assistant Director for the Crisis Advocacy and Interve Intervention Program, CAPE, earlier this year, Anna Wigling, uh, who has been promoted to service as the next Community Safety Support Supervisor, and she will lead the CSL team. Thank you, Anna, for all of your work. The continued growth and development of the CAPE Division represents our city's ongoing effort to broaden the types of support and services available when community members call for help. Today we also recognize the department's continued work to fully staff our dispatch center. I want to welcome and thank the three new emergency communications specialists who have joined the city in recent months. The work of supporting and serving our community takes many forms and each have an important role to play, including the beach and parks team um, and who come on board each summer. I want to thank Evan and Samuel for their work this year. And last but certainly not least, the progress made in rebuilding the sworn and professional staff of the police department would not be possible without the hard work of the recruitment team. So Corporal Caroline uh, Irwin and Ahan, uh, no, Ahad, Ahad, um, Bajwa, thank you. I wanna get that right, it's important. Um, thank you both so much for your efforts. Serving the city of Burlington is an honor and a privilege, and I look forward to continuing to work alongside each of you in service to the residents of Burlington. Thank you so much and congratulations for joining the team. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. Uh, we're really grateful that you're here today. Uh, it's not the first time the mayor, uh, we have appreciated her presence at, at several roll calls, including those for the eclipse, including those for the 3rd of July. And for the families who, uh, who, are, who are new to the Burlington team, uh, Burlington does its Independence Day on the 3rd of July rather than the 4th uh, and hence 3rd of July. And tonight, I believe, Madam Mayor is doing a ride along, uh, and so we're honored to have you there as well, ma'am. Um, and we're, we're really honored to have many, many others here, uh, too. We've got uh, members of our city council. We've got members of our Queen City Police Foundation, an incredibly important supportive group for us. Uh, we have community members and family members, uh, members of, of the media. Um, but I am most honored by those family members, because uh, just as I am honored that you are entrusting to us your loved ones and that you are, are going to help support them in this department and its mission. Family members, you guys share the burden uh, of this unique and challenging but 
very rewarding profession. Because when your loved one uh, works a holiday or has last minute overtime or clocks in for an emergency, you may not be there at the same time, but you're affected by it. For a lot of folks, a stressful day is a tight deadline or a rush of customers or some piece of equipment that's on the fritz, the printer didn't work, the air conditioner's broken. But for us and for members of this profession, a stressful day may mean something different, an awful crime or a terrible crash or a face-to-face -face confrontation with the kinds of human vulnerability and misery that many people never see. And sometimes it's hard to shake that off at the end of the shift and it can affect families too. And I'm grateful for your being here today. But the question, of course, is why would we do that? Why would we put up with that? And the answer is because this work matters. You will not find a profession that matters more. And that's why we're working so hard to rebuild and regrow and why we're seeing real success, thanks in no small part, as the mayor mentioned, to our recruitment coordinator, Anhad Bajwa, and our terrific recruitment officer, Corporal Carolyn Irwin. And speaking of Corporal Irwin, who has done so much to make today possible. Uh, before we dive into welcoming the newest of our team members, I'd like to acknowledge four team members who uh, have reached a special milestone last month, 20 years of service. Corporal Irwin, would you come on up, please? She did not know this was happening, and she did not expect it, I don't think. But your other side is fine. 20 years of service. We're hopeful to get at least 20 more out of her. Uh, she is really, really great. Um, she is, there are four other members of the same cohort, uh, excuse me, three other members of the same cohort, Corporal Lee Thayer, Corporal Matt White, and Corporal Kevin Wilson, who are not able to be with us today. But uh, 20 years is absolutely worthy of recognition and, and uh, of deep appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. So we hope that all of those officers will stay with us a bit longer, but we know too that at some point folks leave, and that is why it's so important to see all of these new faces today. Um, rebuilding and what they represent means so much. So I am, again, tremendously grateful to the mayor and to the city council, members of whom are who are here today, uh, for their support with regard to our efforts in this regard, because we don't just want to rebuild, we want to build back better. And building back better means that we have to keep the incredible talent we have, like Corporal Irwin and the officers who are gathered here today. We have other officers who are here today uh, and, and f uh, team members, all of whom are the foundation of this work. Um, building back better means that we also have to tell the good story that we do for our city and this agency and the people of the BPD, even as we acknowledge the truth of the work they do as well. One of our new recruits is a scholar of John Milton and uh, the English poet, and there's a Milton quote that applies, good, the more communicated, the more abundant grows. I think that we need to tell that good story more. More important for today, building back better means new people, and good people, committed people, people who are ready to serve this community, uh, people who are ready to work in this unique and important way. Because without the work that is done by the men and women in this building, we can't have a strong community. So let's meet our newest teammates. Uh, and we will start with our professional employees. We'll start by swearing them in. Many police departments use the term civilian to distinguish from their police members and their non-police members, and I don't care for that. Dictionaries tell us that a civilian is a person who isn't in the armed services or isn't engaged in hostilities, and that applies to everyone in this department, cops and uh, professional employees. We're not part of the armed forces, although many of our employees have served or do still serve in, in that honorable way, and we're definitely definitely not engaged in hostilities. That is not our work. And so similarly, I, I use the word neighbors for people in our community rather than civilians, because as Sir Robert Peel said, a person I quote often, the police are the public and the public are the police. The cops in the community have to be the same people. So professional and sworn is what we use. And we will start with oaths for our professional employees. Would our four new professional employees please come on up? Uh, actually, it's only three today. Anna, you, we'll get you next as you're with your promotion. 
I know you're, you're very eager to get that. You've been doing the job already. Um, I said all four because we do have a, a missing um, uh, emergency communications specialist who's not with us today. Uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction to each person, and at that point I'll ask uh, her to step forward. And once that's done, we'll administer the oath of office to all of you together. So our first new employee is uh, Janelle Dumas, um, who is the CARES team clinical supervisor. Uh, Janelle worked at the Howard Center since 2017 in, in several different positions, ranging from intensive needs, community support work, program manager in developmental services, residential on-call provider, dialectical behavior therapy coach, or DBT, the treatment court clinician, and also as a part-time clinician out of Howard Center mental health and substance use outpatient work. She's provided prevention of crisis support and in, interned at the Jarrett House, which is a crisis stabilization program for the youth. Uh, she majored in social work with a concentration in forensics at Walden University, and she enjoys outside activities like hiking and swimming and bicycling and documentaries and audiobooks and podcasts. She is our supervisor and our first hire for the Burlington Cares, or Crisis Assessment Response and Engagement Services. So, uh, Burlington Cares is designed to pair clinicians and medical professionals in order to provide in-person, in-the-field response to real-time calls for service. Uh, Burlington Cares will respond to calls like those that are relating to mental health conditions or substance use disorder or trauma-related conditions and other emotional, medical, psychological, behavioral health needs. It intervenes in crisis situations where armed law enforcement is not necessary, but it also has to be able to recognize uh, situations where that kind of intervention may be necessary and to call that in and work with it uh, in, in appropriate ways. Um, she is working hard to hire a clinical, excuse me, a clinician and she's already collaborating very closely with the Burlington Fire Department and its Community Response Team or CRT. So thank you very much for joining us. And next, we have a batch of emergency communications specialists or dispatchers. We're swearing in three of them today, well, two of them today, uh, Mumina Ali and Kelly Brown. So these are the people who first receive that panicked, frightened call after something has gone badly. A burgled home, a missing child, an injured person. And they have to be kind and compassionate, but they have to be businesslike too because they are the first line of response for the public and they are a lifeline for cops in the field. Mumina Ali, Emergency Communication Specialist. Mumina was born in Kenya and raised in Nashville, Tennessee, but spent every other summer since she was 11 years old here in Burlington until officially moving here uh, a few years ago, over a year ago. She is Somali, speaks three languages, including Somali, Mai Mai, and English, and is currently learning both Japanese and Spanish, because why not, right? <laughs> uh, you know, the easy ones. Uh, she graduated from American University, located in Washington, D.C., with a Bachelor of Arts in Criminology and Psychology, and dedicated a lot of her time there to studying and analyzing the criminal justice system and constitutional law. Obviously, very useful things for the work she does now. She's a previous youth poet laureate, and spends a lot of her time writing and performing her own poetry, or going to open mics to hear others perform theirs. And if she's not at work, she's probably playing Call of Duty, or watching anime, or reading a book under a tree. Uh, and uh, where is a better place to do it than here in Burlington? So thank you for being here and being on this team. <laughs> Kelly Brown, Emergency communication Specialist. Kelly was born and raised in Vermont. She's married and a mother to five boys who are 10 to 17 years old. And if you can't remain calm and cool with, uh, ten bo with five boys, uh, then I'm sure that dealing with folks calling in is no, no, uh, no difficulty. Kelly is attending Community College of Vermont in Montpelier for a degree in forensic psychology. She has a background in nursing and has worked in the mother-baby unit at UVMMC for the past seven years before joining this department. She loves traveling, including Costa Rica, and Aruba, Jamaica, not too bad places. Uh, actually, I almost started to sing that Beach Boys song right there. Um, but luckily for all of you, I did not. Um, thank you also for joining us. And we will now administer the oath. Execute. I will faithfully execute 
Today, we are also promoting a team member from within our CAPE team, uh, Ms. Anna Wagling. So as the mayor already said, CAPE, or our Crisis Advocacy Intervention Programs, is a new part of the Burlington Police Department, and it's something that no other law enforcement agency in Vermont has. It consists of Burlington CARES team that I just mentioned in uh, talking about the work that Janelle is doing. And it also includes our domestic violence victims advocate, Mary McAllister, who celebrates 25 years of service with us this month, and the victim service specialist, Hannah. Uh, Hannah Brislin uh, is an employee of CEDO, or the Community Economic Development Office, a different part of the city, but they are also an employee of the Burlington Police Department and sit here most of the time. Um, CAPE is also home to our Community Support Liaisons, or CSLs, which are our in-house social workers, and they help address many of those root causes that drive public disorder, such as chronic mental health conditions, substance use disorder, and homelessness. Anna Wagling joined us first as a CSL in October of 2021, and she was one of the very first hires for that new team. But she'd already had 10 years experience working in the human services field. Her previous work included supporting refugees, settling in Vermont, and providing support for families in the Reach Up program. Since becoming a CSL back in 2021, she's been an incredibly important team member. She helped create the CAPE pamphlet that has been shared citywide. She initiated the remodel of our victims witness rooms so that our most vulnerable community members have a space that feels welcoming in the worst of times for them. She used her love of other cultures and experience with refugees to help our recruitment team expand recruiting into our local immigrant communities and also to conduct culturally competent training for BPD members. And so we are very grateful that she will now be using all of those skills as the new Community Support Supervisor, or CSS, who oversees and manages the CSLs. Um, Anna values, a difference, it values making a difference in the Burlington community, and I believe she is really looking forward to continuing that goal in this increased capacity. She traveled with us to San Diego last October as part of our uh, presentation at the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference, or IACP. It's a big deal to get to present at that event, and uh, the presentation was largely Anna's creation, and, and she and Lacey Smith uh, really led that presentation. I was privileged to, to be there with them and do that that. Um, she has passion for learning new languages, partaking in any type of craft, and exploring Vermont. And when she's not at the police department, she's often working concerts at higher ground or volunteering. I guess that's one way to get in and yeah, yeah. see stuff that you otherwise wouldn't. Can you get me into Lake Street Dive at the end of the summer? My boyfriend works for them. Okay, yes. great. Awesome. Yeah. All right, great. Uh, and now we will administer the oath. And now it's time for our new police. So police officers are called sworn employees. I talked a little bit about the difference between professional and sworn. But we call police officers sworn employees because they alone swear an oath under pains and penalties of perjury. So when it's time for Deputy Chief Lebrecht to, uh, to give that oath, you'll hear that slight difference. And this is required because of the specific powers that are conferred on them by the state of Vermont and the ability to take sworn statements, et cetera. Uh, we will start with our lateral police officers, only one of whom is here today. Uh, laterals are officers who are or have already been certified, uh, sometimes because they've come from another state uh, or sometimes because they've completed the Vermont Police Academy previously or for another agency but are now joining or rejoining the BPD. And will Officer Williamson please come on up. Officer Stephen Williamson. Stephen grew up a military brat and has traveled all over the U.S. to include Mississippi and Oregon and Illinois and Massachusetts, Florida, California, but 
largely 23 years in Texas. And in addition to all the domestic travels, he's visited Ireland, Holland, and Greece. After joining the Air Force, Stephen was deployed to Guantanamo Bay and Saudi Arabia. Uh, following his military commitment, Stephen joined the Beaumont Police Department in Beaumont, Texas, and he retired after serving there for 19 years. Post-retirement, but before joining the BPD in June, Stephen had a brief stint as a Department of Navy police officer, which was about one year at the Groton Subbase in Connecticut. He's father to five kids, three adult stepkids and two of his own, a nine-year-old girl and a 12-year-old boy. He loves being outdoors, taking parts in recreational activities, kayaking, hiking, just being out, and has five dogs, which is probably more complicated than five kids, uh, including three labs and a Jack Russell and another Jack Russell Schnauzer mix, and three cats. So do they get along? Yeah, more or less. Wow, all right. That's, you must be doing something right in that household. Well done. Um, and uh, our other uh, officer is Bibek Garung, uh, who is uh, out, I believe, on, on a call. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, Stephen, if you would step over to the side, because I think we'll do all of the uh, oaths at the same time for everybody. So you guys don't have to listen through all of them again. And so, therefore, now I would ask that our four new recruit police officers come up and join, if you would, please, gentlemen. Class, attention. Forward march. About face. That is. Well done. These four police recruits are about to embark on a lot more of that. Uh, this is drilling that we have done over the past two weeks with them prior to sending them for 16 weeks of training at the Vermont Police Academy in Pittsford, Vermont. And there they will learn about community policing and fair and impartial policing and addressing mental health crises. And they will get training. They will get training in force and firearms and fingerprints and forensics. And those are just the Fs. And there are 20, uh, you know, five other letters. Uh, there's also precision driving and domestic violence and drug recognition and motor vehicle law and addressing mental illness and interview and interrogation and juvenile law and, and, and. It's a lot. It is a lot of work down there, 850 plus hours, uh, but the academy is just a piece. And when we get these officers back, we will expose them to how Burlington does what we do, which is, I believe, different and better. You will have at least 580 hours of field training with experienced police officers, uh, some of whom are in this room. By volume and variety, the men and women of this agency do more and see more than those of any other police department in Vermont. Um, we expect a lot of you, and I know that you will deliver. So, uh, if you would, uh, step forward as I call your name. We will begin with Recruit Officer Malik View, badge two, 425. Malik was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and is 24. He came to Vermont in 2022 to play basketball at the Vermont State University, which I grew up calling Johnson State College. And he recently graduated with a Bachelor's of Business Administration. He is a laid back person, but he's also very competitive and he welcomes new challenges, all of which we can promise you, Malik. He enjoys being active, playing sports, basketball, football, working out, biking, and riding motorcycles. Thank you. <laughs> Recruit Officer Wylance Adams, badge 426. Recruit Adams goes by Lance. He was born and raised in Jersey City, New Jersey, and moved to New York when he was about five. He's lived in every borough of New York except for Staten Island, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Harlem in Manhattan, and he loved playing basketball as a kid. Shortly after graduating from high school, Lance moved to upstate New York to pursue a college degree, graduating from SUNY Oneonta in 2013 with a bachelor's in criminal justice. Lance has some previous campus police experience working at American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts, and he's also worked part-time armed security, but for the past 10 years he worked in corrections in Connecticut. Some of his hobbies include reading, traveling, and playing video games. Call of Duty is, a, is another one there too, so uh, is his favorite. Lance and his best friend plan to travel to Africa and visit Ghana and the Gold Coast region sometime in the near future. Thank you. Recruit Officer Dong Hwan Chun, badge 427. Recruit Chun goes by Alex, and he was born in South Korea and raised in California. 
He served in the South Korean military uh, as his mandatory uh, as a rifleman and an administrative and performed administrative duties as well before earning his bachelor's and master's degrees in English at a Catholic liberal arts university in Seoul, South Korea. He then matriculated at the University of Notre Dame. And last August, he submitted his doctoral dissertation on the virtue of listening in John Milton's Paradise Lost and received his PhD in English from the University of Notre Dame. There, he also taught courses on writing and classical rhetoric and the idea of the common good in 17th century England, the perception of race, genders, and otherness in European literature as well. He taught Latin for incarcerated individuals at the Westville Correctional Facility in Indiana. When not reading, writing, or translating Greco-Roman classics or shopping at Costco, he likes collecting pencils and repairing fountain pens. <laughs> Recruit Officer Juan Angel, badge 428. Juan was born in the Dominican Republic, but was raised in New York City. He's fluent in English and Spanish, and growing up he played basketball and football and boxed for fitness and self-defense. He served in the US Army as a power generator technician, which is where he learned how to do car repairs. And he's worked security for more than 20 years, including uh, everything from corporate security to event security, club security, retail, and executive protection. He has a daughter who lives in Pennsylvania, and he loves merengue salsa and Latin pop. His hobbies include softball, fishing, automotive detailing, exercise, video games, maybe Call of Duty too, I don't know, <laughs> and boxing and racing motorsport and he is coming to us here after eight years of living in Boston. So, gentlemen, uh, Deputy Chief Lebrecht will now administer the oath, and for any sworn officers who are in attendance, you are welcome to renew your oath as well uh, and speak along with our new employees. Please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, I John Murad. Do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will execute, that I will faithfully execute the office of probationary police officer, the office of chief police officer, for the city of Burlington, for the city of Burlington, and the state of Vermont, and the state of Vermont. On my honor, on my honor, I will never betray my badge. I will never betray my badge. My integrity, my integrity, my character, my character, for the public trust, for the public trust. I will always have the courage. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. Accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution. I will always uphold the Constitution and the community I serve. And the community I serve. I will therein. I will therein do equal right and justice. Do equal right and justice to all men and women. To all men and women. To the best of my judgment. To the best of my judgment. Ability. Ability. According to the laws. According to the laws of this. State and the United States of America. Of this state and the United States of America. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And these are our new police recruits. Take seats. So as we welcome these new officers and grow, we have also said farewell to some others. Sergeant Vinnie Ross departed last week after 10 years of service, but he left us with some words of wisdom that moved me and that I want to share. He quoted something written by Doug Zembiak, who was an officer in the United States Marine Corps and a graduate of the Naval Academy and had been a two-time NCAA All-American wrestler. He had a distinguished military career before he was killed in action in Iraq in 2007. The remarks that Vinnie shared said in part, be a person of principle, fight for what you believe in, keep your word, live with integrity, be brave, believe in something bigger than yourself, 
serve your community, teach, mentor, give back to society, lead from the front, conquer your fears, be a good friend, be humble and self-confident, appreciate your friends and family, be a leader, not a follower, be valorous in the field, and take responsibility for your actions. I think this says a lot about how to live as employees and public servants of the city of Burlington and as good people. And these words are guideposts for how to keep people safe as we strive to make Burlington safe and fair everywhere for everyone. And that is the mission that you are accepting today and that all of you family members are agreeing to support. So welcome to the best job that you will ever have. Welcome to a camaraderie that you won't get anywhere else. It is a job where the right mixture of compassion and accountability, authority and good judgment can make a real difference in people's lives and in the health of your community. Burlington wants and deserves great cops and we have to have great cops. And I think that today we're not getting anything less than that. This is a very high stakes job. Uh, and it's for all of us, for dispatchers, for our records clerks, dealing with people who need stuff, for our, the members of our CAPE team. It is a high stress job, but it is a highly rewarding job. And so, as I have said many times before, I believe that it is impossible to have a great life unless it is a meaningful life. And it's impossible to have a meaningful life without meaningful work. I can promise you meaningful work. I can't promise you a great life, but I can promise you that meaningful life because of that meaningful work. So you are Burlington's police department and your city welcomes you to this team. And thank you very much for joining us. And there is uh, cake and food to be had. Uh, there are, can be photos in front of the drop here uh, with family members, et cetera. And then we do have some things, paperwork that has to be signed for you new employees, et cetera. But uh, thank you very much. And thank you all, all of you for being with us today.